Hey everybody, so in today's video, I wanted to cover the financial sector and I wanted to do a broad technical analysis on all of these tickers. So we're gonna start with XLF. So XLF is the financial sector spider ETF. And when I'm looking at this, you know, we have the support line right here. And this has caught many of these um, massive rallies right here, as you guys can see. But when we broke underneath this, things started getting a little bit hairy. You can kind of see that when we clearly broke underneath us, we had this massive gap down. And then, as you guys can see on the weekly time frame, we have this massive gap right here. And if we wanted to fill this, it's going to be 3237. So if we want to fill this 3237, and if we break this area right here, right around 3058, we risk going all the way down to this 200 weekly time frame, uh, right here at 2927. And then if we wanted to go underneath this, then I do think we could fall all the way to this level right here, which is this little gap that we left um, right around the uh, pre-pandemic crash. So we could go all the way down to that area, which is kind of support right around here, as you guys can see. And we do have this gap that we've never filled before. And this takes us all the way down to 2463. So that's about a 20% crash from where we already are. So XLF could potentially see a lot of pain if the financials don't pan out that well. Now, another area that we could potentially go underneath if we do break this area is going to be this other gap that we never really filled. Now it's not as big, you know, there's this tiny little gap right there. So this could be 2132 and I would think that that's like max, max pain right there. So moving on, we have JP Morgan. So as you guys can see, JP Morgan, it's been kind of moving down in this um, falling wedge and we recently broke out, but we could just fall right back into this falling wedge. So we actually had this moment where we broke above the 50 day moving average. Now, if you look at the 50 day moving average, we've got this 20 day moving average and these moving averages are literally colliding. Now, what could happen is that this 50 just goes right underneath the 20. So um, right now, things don't look too good for JP Morgan. And I'm going to zoom out for you guys. I'm going to go on the weekly time frame. So if I'm going on this weekly time frame, you guys can see we're actually below the 200 weekly. So this is not a good look. This is actually a very bad look. And if we're looking for gaps here, there's a very clear one right here. It goes all the way down to 105. So that's around, uh, it's like a little bit less than 10% from where we are right here. So there's a pretty high potential that JP Morgan can fall like another 9% and we could go and fill this gap. Now, um, the other thing I do want to know is that we do have this gap to the upside that we've kind of left open right here. It's at 119.43. So there could also be the scenario where we do have this rally. You know, we fill this gap and then maybe we just fall all the way and then um, fill this gap at 105.13. Now, if we fall below that, it's going to be quite a nasty fall. And I would think that support shows itself right around um, 9182. So as you can see that this was um, prior resistance right there, right there, support right there, support right there, and right there. Now, this also lines up with um, this support trend line right here. And it's kind of drawing out where the end of this falling wedge could go to. So I would think that this 9182 would be a strong potential area that we could bounce. Now, if we don't bounce, I think the next thing that happens is this um, pandemic crash level. So this also lines up with this massive bar that we had here. So this is gonna be 7664. Now moving on, Bank of America. As you guys can see, this is the weekly time frame right here. We recently bounced off the 200 weekly and we went and filled this gap right here. So what happens next? Well, I really don't know. I mean, we're basically sitting at resistance right here. 
So if we do have another leg down and we break below this 200 weekly, it's going to get ugly very quickly. And I think it'll be a very quick trip to 2908. And then even below this, I mean, there's not a whole lot of support that shows up until this gap fill area right here at around 2420. And then even below that, I would think 2102. And as you guys can see, it was this shelf of support right here, support right there. And then you can kind of see that we had um, some sideways action right around here. Below that is going to be 1692. And this is um, literally the pandemic crash level. It's also this massive um, bar right here at the top of this massive bar. So at that point, you know, I would say, why not go ahead and buy um, Bank of America? Because, you know, that wouldn't be all that bad of a deal. And honestly, you know, bank stocks, you know, they have their up and downs. It really depends on like these cycles that we go through. So if you could hold it long enough, like I don't think Bank of America is really going anywhere. But, you know, I could be wrong. I don't think it's a bad buy right around these levels, definitely. And then if we zoom out, as you guys can see, oops, zoomed out too far. Let's go back. So if I zoom out right here, it's also resistance right there. So this could be a pretty nice level of support if we do fall all the way down there. And then who knows, maybe it could be like a double bottom and then we rally. Now, Wells Fargo, I mean, it's like the least popular of the bunch. Nobody likes Wells Fargo. So if we're looking at Wells Fargo, we do have this resistance line right here. It was resistance right there, right there, right there, right there. And then we actually broke right here. But then notice that when we had this gap down, this was acting as resistance right there, hard rejection right there. So if we do fall, I would think that we just go right back to this 36.91 area. As you guys can see, it's the top of this massive green bar right there. It's also a support right around here. If we break below this, I think it gets pretty ugly pretty quick. And I would think that, you know, we're just going all the way down here to uh, 33.03. Now, below this, I would think that we could go all the way down to this um, 2472 to 2591 zone. So as you guys can see, there's just like a lot of sideways action right around here. So that's kind of like my base case for Wells Fargo. Um, and also do note that we recently had this 20-day moving average on the week cross below the 50 uh, weekly we're also below the 200 weekly on price action. So Wells Fargo doesn't look good right now. Ally, Ally had such a strong rally as you guys can see. This was one massive, massive rally. So this leads me to believe, okay, on the way down, it could be just as strong. So right now we do have a gap on the weekly chart. If we wanna fill that gap, we're gonna to have to go all the way to 37.56-ish. And if we're looking at downside right now, we cracked below this 200 weekly. So it doesn't look good right now. We are basically sitting around this um, pre-pandemic crash level. If we do cut underneath here, well then I think we could find support and it's not even good support, right around 28.33. And if I'm looking for a stronger area of support, I would think right around here at this 23.04 level could be a much stronger support. Below that, well, you don't really want to know. It gets pretty ugly. I would think um, right around here, maybe uh, $20. But right now, Ally does not look good underneath the um, 200. And there's not even a whole lot of price action on Ally. Morgan Stanley. So Morgan Stanley is definitely doing a lot better than these others. If we're looking at the 200 weekly, it's still above the 200 weekly. As you guys can see, we're in this falling wedge um, pattern right here. And we recently cut underneath the 100 weekly. So it um, doesn't look too good right now. And we could have this 20-day moving average on the weekly. 
caught underneath this 100 day weekly. So um, we could see that happen and we could possibly just go all the way down to this 200 weekly. If we're just looking, there's really not a whole lot of support on Morgan Stanley. So this could just be straight down, you know, like I would think right here, we could maybe momentarily stop. That's right around uh, 6694. This isn't even a strong support area, you guys. This is pretty damn weak. And um, we could even go down, fill this gap right there. Not a big gap. And then if we really wanted to fill the big gap, if we're filling that big gap, it's going to be this right here. Right there at 5287. Now, if we're going to fall below that, I would think that the strongest area of support is going to be right around here at 45.75. Now you guys can see that this was resistance, resistance, support, resistance, 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 support. So this is probably the strongest area. And it also happens to be like the end of this um, uh, falling wedge pattern. So, um, Definitely, I would think 200 weekly could happen. And then if we break below that, then this is by far the strongest level of support right here, 45.75. Schwab, Schwab does not look that good. So um, if I'm just looking at Schwab, it's definitely stronger than everything else. But you also have to look at this 200 weekly right here. And it's looking like we're gonna wanna go down there. This 200 weekly is at 54.36. And if I'm looking here, there's just not a whole lot of support around that area. So I do feel like, you know, it wouldn't be surprising if we just cut underneath that. And we revert all the way back to this area right here, right around 50.57. It was prior resistance right there. It was acting as support right here. And then we have this little shelf of support right around there. And then if we break below that, I would think uh, 43.50 could be entirely possible. It was resistance right there, resistance right there, resistance right there, resistance right there. Once we broke this area, we had this massive rally. I'm sure people right here were thinking, oh man, is this a double top? Nope, wasn't a double top, it was a massive rally. City. City looks exactly like it sounds. It looks pretty city to me. So if I'm looking at city, um, Gonna go on the weekly. So on the weekly, look at this. We have a death cross on the weekly. That is so bad, death cross on the weekly. And if I'm looking at price action right here, on this weekly time frame, you know, it looks like it could fill this gap right here at 43.99. So that can entirely happen. We fill that gap. Now what happens after we fill that gap? Well, I really don't know. Like there's not a whole lot of support here. I mean, we've just been chopping back and forth. I would think um, 3381 could be support. It was um, this level right here where we had this crash, support right here when we had this crash. And you could see that we were kind of messing around within this level right there. Now, if we're looking at Visa, I do want to note on Visa, we have this longer term trend line. So this could potentially act as support. Now on the weekly time frame. We're kind of messing with the 200 weekly. This is getting very, very dangerous. It's definitely flirting with the 200 weekly right here. So I would think, you know, if we cut underneath the 200 weekly, I definitely think that we're going to see um, 179.73. You guys can see that this was um, this area of support right there. So, you know, if we cut underneath this um, support right there, well then it's a very, very, very steep fall if we don't get caught by this support line. So if we get caught by this support line, you know, it could be something like 169-ish or one like 167, 169, like in these uh, 160 to 170 levels. And then if we break below this, then yeah, I mean, there's really, really, really no support around here. I think it could fall all the way to 150.69. If we fall below that, you know, I would think 134.47. When I'm looking here, this is like the 2020 crash level. And if we fall below that, I would think that it's 
122.70 is going to be our area. So um, this was also this crash level right here. MasterCard, if I'm looking at MasterCard, we have a very similar trend line right here as well. So we're also in a very similar situation right here as well, where we bounced off the 200 weekly. And as of um, price action right now, we're kind of building a doji. So we'll see where this ends. But if we break underneath this 200 weekly, you know, I would think that the next level of support is going to be 293.57, which is going to be um, kind of this resistance right here, this support right there. If we break below that, I would think a stronger level of support could be uh, 283.57, as you guys can see. Resistance right there. Once we broke this resistance, we had this rally. And then we crashed and we reverted back to this area right here. And then when we broke above this, we saw that massive rally. And then there's also support right there. So 283.57. If we break below this, you know, uh, things probably look a lot more ugly. And, you know, maybe 254.42 could be like max pain. Actually, I lied. That's probably not max pain. It, max pain will probably be right around this support line, which we could always break below. And you know, I keep saying max pain. You know, max pain, I would say, is right here, this um, 2020 crash level. So, you know, if we're going to see capitulation, I would think that we go to this trend line and then we cut below that. Now, American Express, uh, on the weekly chart, we do have a gap. That gap is 154.17. And if I'm zooming out here, um, you know, we could fall to this 200 weekly. This 200 weekly is at 130.06. It happens to line up with the top of this massive pandemic crash bar. So if we do break below this, I would think, you know, we could just have this straight down all the way to 110. Because as you guys can see, there's just not a whole lot of support um, below that. Now, uh, lastly, I'm looking at SoFi. So with SoFi, it's very clear what's going on here. So uh, SoFi is constantly getting rejected by this 50 day. So rejection right here rejection right here, hard rejection right here. Right here, they're like, eh, you know what? We're gonna short it before it even hits the 50. And then we left this gap right here. We actually broke through this. So I'm sure a lot of people got trapped right here, but you know, short it again. Didn't even build a double top. They decided to just sell it right there at the 50. And then we went back, we filled this gap right here, as you guys can see. So now it's kind of just, uh, do we make it back to these lows right here at, you know, 482? Do we make it back to these levels or do we build a higher low? And then who knows what happens from there. But also notice that this 20 day and this 50 day are kind of converging. So we'll see what goes on with that. But um, thus far, it's just been lower highs and lower lows. So if the trend does continue, then yeah, we should break 482 to the downside. Now, SoFi is down so much that I actually wanted to go onto their balance sheet and calculate their um, tangible book value per share. So as you guys can see, I'm on their uh, most recent 10Q. I'm looking at their condensed consolidated balance sheets and I'm looking at this most recent quarter so what I am doing right here is I am getting their total equity right here, their permanent equity. So I am getting this permanent equity amount. And from this amount, I am subtracting the untangibles, the intangibles. So those intangibles are going to be this line item right here, intangible assets, goodwill. It's going to be servicing rights. And it's going to be operating lease rights of use assets. So when I actually go through the calculations, I have an Excel spreadsheet that does this. So if I'm looking at this Excel spreadsheet, you know, I have the total equity. And remember, equity is assets minus liabilities. So um, equity right here, we're going to subtract all of these intangible as assets. We're going to get our tangible book value. 
And then from that, we are going to divide by shares outstanding. And then we get tangible book value at $3.29. So this is probably like an area of where you could really start seeing like max pain. And you know, but below this, you know, you'll say, oh, it's below tangible book value. So, you know, maybe you could buy with a little bit more confidence because, you know, once people start shorting stocks when it's like at $3.29, there's just a lot of risk because you never know, you know, these, these uh, stocks can literally just rip at any given point. And there's not a whole lot of risk to reward if you're buying puts around these levels. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was kind of long, so I will leave uh, timestamps down below for you guys in the description if you want to just quickly make it to the ticker that you need. And I hope you guys have a great, good one.